News we are tracking. The average daily global sea surface temperature beat a 2016 record this week. Now that's according to the EU's climate change service, Copernicus. The temperature reached 20.96 degrees Celsius. Now that's far above the average for this time of the year. The broken temperature record follows a series of marine heat waves this year, including in the UK, the North Atlantic, the Mediterranean and the Gulf of Mexico. Let me now bring in Gordon McBean, Professor of Geography and Environment at the University of Western Ontario. Good afternoon and thank you for your time, Professor. Appreciate it. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. So why do you think, Professor, we're seeing this uh, record breaking of heating of ocean waters? What's happening here? Well, the oceans are reflecting the, the increasing warming globally that's been happening due to the increased number of greenhouse gases, the amount of it in the atmosphere. And the oceans have play, play a huge role in the climate system. When we talk about the global average temperature, much of that is the temperature in the ocean areas and the land areas, including Canada, warm faster because we don't have the oceans to stabilize our our temperature system the way the oceans do. But the oceans now warming, as you've noted, with ocean heat is has huge implications for not only the oceans themselves, but for the land areas around it. And your show a couple of minutes ago was on wildfires and then for that on tornadoes. Mm -hmm. And as we warm the oceans, the energy that can become available to create uh, more storms and more tornadoes possibly uh, is going to increase, increasing the risk of those. And that's why the Northern Tornadoes Project at Western is studying and mapping where tornadoes occur. The climate change warms up even further with the oceans being a major factor in that. We're going to see even more of that. But the oceans themselves, as your filming is just showing, is the effect on the species within the oceans right. is quite significant. And so... I was just going to ask you that, Professor, the fact that, of course, when oceans are getting hotter, it's not only affecting, uh, you know, phenomena above the oceanic water, but also about aquatic life in the water. So what is going to be the implication of that with heating waters? Oh, with the heating waters, we're going to see the implications as they're already happening and being seen on coral reefs, on the fish species in the oceans. This has huge impacts on the let's say the ecosystem, the survival of some of these species. In some cases, they will, let's say, m move to another location in the ocean, different species. It also has implications for the sea ice on the oceans because it will melt more because it's warmer. And that also leads to the risk of these major ice sheets, as you're showing now, of melt much more they flow into the oceans with all that water, and that raises the sea level. And as the water gets warmer, it also rises, of course, just through expansion. And sea level rise is a major concern all the way around the globe, mm -hmm. and particularly in small island states and the coastal zones of Canada, such as Prince Edward Island and British Columbia. Where... Right. Well, lots of uh, low-level cities across the world at a risk when, of course, sea levels rise. But we'll have to leave it at that for the moment, Professor. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Gordon McBean, Professor of Geography and Environment at the University of Western Ontario. So thank you for your time.